Hi! Every once in a while we find the dreaded intermittent faults, which is what we have in this video. One way to tackle an intermittent fault is to try and find a pattern, something that correlates with the fault. In this case it was either time or temperature, because the TV works for a period of time and then shuts down. Because it would not work again for another period of time, I assumed it was a fault caused by heat. As it gets hotter it fails and then it gets colder it will work again. I already rolled out the power supply, it keeps working properly even when the TV fails. As you can see, it's working fine now. I shut it down and now I will hit the main board. This small gas torch is certainly not the best tool for the job, but if you are careful you will not damage anything. I've turned the mains power back on. I have now pressed the standby button. And as you can see, it didn't turn on. The backlight is still off 20 seconds later. Cold sprays are great tools, useful to diagnose intermittent faults caused by temperature changes. They usually include a thin tube, so that you can point at a small point of the board. You just have to cool down a part of the board at a time, until you find a section that changes its behavior with the change in temperature. You should also note that you can only spray directly low voltage parts. The cold surface will draw a lot of humidity and that could cause a short circuit. In this case, I already narrow it down to the flash memory chip. When I cool it down, it always works flawlessly. I don't know the physics that explain why this happens, but it's the third time I've seen this behavior in three different types of equipment and with flash chips from three different manufacturers. The first step is to remove the malfunctioning flash. Failures in flash memories can be tricky. Unless you have access to a similar unit so you can copy the memory contents, you might not be able to complete the repair. However, in these cases of intermittent failures, I've found that as long as you keep the flash IC from getting hot, you can use a flash programmer to read the memory contents. Now, you either buy a compatible flash, or you find a donor device. I didn't have any new flash with more than 16 megabits, so I use an old router as a donor device to get the working flash. The next step is to try and read the old flash. I use one of these cheap Mini Pro TLX66 programmers. They are very good with these serial flashes. If you watch closely, you note that the flash chips have completely different part numbers. But fortunately, these serial flashes have very similar protocols with similar basic commands. As long as the software doesn't check for the flash chip ID, or there are not any hard-coded timing delays, you have a good chance that it will work. The first thing you need to do is to select the IC. However, conveniently, this software supports automatic detection of 25 series flash ICs. After selecting the IC, you just read the flash contents and save them in a file. If you want, you can cool down the flash and then verify that what you read the first time is accurate.
Now you put the replacement IC in the programmer. If it was a blank ship, I would just write it, but I will save the current contents just in case I need them in the future. Now all I have to do is write the contents of the bad flash under replacement 1. Just to show you that the flashes are compatible, I will select the part number of the previous flash and try to read this one. Note that while this usually works, when the devices use fancier features like multiple data streams or unusually high transfer speeds, you might have to use the same part number as the replacement. It works. Now I will solder the replacement flash in the board. You should be very careful when using solder wick to clean the PCB pads. They are easily damaged. Now I will make sure this one works even when it's hot. I've pressed standby switch. It should turn on around 10 seconds later. There it is. I've connected the camera's HDMI output to the TV to make sure it is working properly. This repair was made around 2 months ago. This TV has been working properly ever since.